in this web class, we're talking about the 11 ways to boost testosterone and sex drive naturally. Hey, it's Corey Sievers here from the Savvy Team and welcome along here to this particular session. Gentlemen, we're going to be talking about some uh, some information here about, you know, some impor an important topic related to your hormonal health and well-being. So, uh, and of course, ladies too, if you're listening in on behalf of your man or um, <laughs> or with your man or whatever, then great to have you here as well. But gentlemen, we're going to have a bit of a conversation here. So um, buckle your seatbelts up. We, you know, in the Savvy Team, we're all about helping you to enjoy improved health and well-being and sometimes hormonal imbalance and dealing with the things that are bringing us down, like low testosterone levels, that can be, you know, sort of like the stumbling block for you. So if this information is something that you're finding valuable, uh, that you know someone else might find valuable, then please uh, give us some thumbs up and share this information with someone as well. So let's get underway with the 11 ways to boost testosterone and sex drive naturally. But before we jump on into that particular topic, an important topic, yes, I wanna ask you a general topic here, and that is in which direction do your daily food and lifestyle choices lead you currently? So what we talk of here is our illness wellness continuum. And so, you know, most people think that wellness is just not being sick. So, you know, the neutral point there, no discernible illness or wellness, whereas we see that it's so much more than that. So the treatment paradigm by its very nature means that there's got to be a problem that shows up. And it's just about getting you past all the symptoms and the signs and back to a neutral point. Whereas wellness is all about, it doesn't matter where you are on the continuum, by taking the steps, you can progress continuously to a higher level of wellness. But you've got to operate a little bit differently. And so we assert that there are two fundamental or underlying causes of poor health. And that's excessive toxicity and a lack of nutrition. And you'll start to get a glimpse that these could also be the two fundamentals or underlying causes of low testosterone level levels and therefore erectile dysfunction, um, poor sperm count, low semen quality, no get up and go and all those sorts of things too. Because it's really chemical exposure and a lack of micronutrients that can really Bring you undone. So achieving hormonal balance, maintaining a healthier weight, feeling your best, boosting your T levels could be as easy as one, two, three. Decrease toxin exposure by altering your diet and changing brands to safer home care, personal care, household type products. And you'll learn about that as we go through these steps. Increase your nutrition, aiming for the 90 nutrients that your body needs every day to maintain all sorts of body systems. But we're talking here, these are just as important for maintaining your testosterone levels as well. And then optimize your body's detoxification pathways and the rest of your body systems with our wellness programs. You really can reach a high level of well-being and with this simple philosophy, we like to say it's as easy as one, two, three. Of course, sometimes there's more work for other people. There's there's more to do in those one, two, three. There might be more systems to optimize in that step three. But really, if you want to know more about all of this concept, we have a free online class that deals with that. So gentlemen, I wanted to talk with you and chat with you really about the about testosterone levels, the the um, I guess the problems with low testosterone the benefits of optimizing testosterone. So, um, you know, you may be, as I said before, you may be watching with um, with your significant other. Ladies, you might be in on the act here, seeing what we're getting up to here, talking about testosterone. But, uh, <laughs> we, you know, here's what we're dealing with here. If you, some of the signs of low testosterone in, include low semen volume. Okay, so testosterone plays a major role in semen quality. And, uh, and so therefore, again, if, if, if things aren't right there, then that could be a sign of low testosterone. So generally, um, you know, looking at your, your whole outlook on life, if you're feeling um, down, fatigued, those sorts of things, that can be another sign. Uh, generally, low testosterone through blood tests, again, 
If you don't know your testosterone level, you could have that checked. As I said, fatigue, um, decreased bone mass and muscle mass as well, hair loss, difficulty achieving and maintaining an erection, mood changes, general low sex drive, and there are a myriad of other issues that that really can be that can be um, exacerbated by low testosterone levels. And so we have um, this fun picture on screen right now, the, the benefits of optimal testosterone. So if you have low testosterone, for a start, you might have this gut happening here because uh, that's one of the, the signs there and one of the triggers for low testosterone as well. So often, you know, so if you have an increased fat deposition around the middle, you're likely to have lower testosterone. So what we need to do is help you lose that weight and that subsequently helps your testosterone go up and then also that makes it easier for you to keep the weight off. It's one of those uh, vicious cycle types of things that are happening. Uh, constant fatigue, depression, increased risk of Alzheimer's disease, um, increased risk of erectile dysfunction, low libido, and even osteoporosis. All of these are risks of low testosterone or less than optimal testosterone. If we can optimize your testosterone, you will have a sharper mind, more confidence, you'll feel happier increased muscle mass, a healthier heart, stronger erections and a healthier libido, stronger bones and plenty of energy. So uh, there's some of the benefits of dealing with testosterone. And, you know, there's a lot of information that gets around uh, about, um, you know, testosterone injections and, and, uh, and you know, the, the benefit of that. Uh, we're not, we're, we're talking about naturally boosting testosterone. The last thing we want to do is get some um, exogenous hormones into your system, uh, you know, really, unless you really are significantly not dealing with things. The first step is to see whether we can eliminate the things, the toxins and chemicals that are upsetting your imbalance. And then we need to supply your body with the nutrients. Uh, just like we said, they're easy as one, two, three. But, you know, sometimes a physical examination might be helpful if you've, you know, if you are really concerned about um, significant symptoms because, you know, looking at the size of your breasts, your testicles, your penis, scrotum, all of that sort of thing, the amount of body hair you're carrying, um, the consistency and size of your, as I said, of your testicles. Uh, they can do hormone tests, look at the interplay of all these sorts of things as well. So we're obviously dealing here if you're not suffering from a medical condition and you're you're just wanting to stack the odds in your favor and look for natural alternatives to optimize your health and vitality, then definitely you are in the right place here. So that's what we're talking about, guys. So gentlemen, we are going to be talking about your cojones, <laughs> your, your avocados. This, um, this particular thing has been um, making its way around the internet a little bit that... Um, um, it's interesting that if you've never noticed that avocados have a tendency to sort of hang sort of like a pair of testicles, um, one a little bit lower than the other and sort of often in twos and um, just like this. And so um, it turns out the Aztec word for, um, for avocado is supposed to be the same as testicle. I don't know whether it's because of the fact that it looked very similar to testicles, but also uh, making its way around as a bit of a meme on um, in social media is the fact that guacamole uh, technically translates to testicle sauce. So not that type of testicle sauce. Get your mind out of the R-rated section and just think about testicle sauce as in squashing them. So we are going to be talking about your avocados, guys. We're going to be talking about your man boobs uh, and whether you have them or not. We are going to be talking about whether the on-off switch is working or whether your gun's gone a bit soft. Um, we don't want you to be bond here with, um, with a soft gun. And so or these, are, these things like man boobs and erectile dysfunction and uh, difficulty maintaining a strong erection, these are symptoms of too much, often too much estrogen in your system and therefore antagonizing testosterone. So what we need to do is not only supply the body with the nutrients to upregulate testosterone production, but what we've got to do is we've got to get out all these nasty xenoestrogens, xenobiotics, endocrine disrupting chemicals that are causing you to go soft, shall we say. So, <laughs> uh, sorry, ladies, uh, for those ladies joining us here. Uh, I hope you can um, 
we're often talking about women's uh, challenges and all that sort of thing. So I'm sure you're right with all of this. So, so we're actually going to be talking about testosterone boosting. And so, oh, I put her here for no other reason but to give you an instant testosterone boost. Uh, because that certainly they have done some studies around that. So when you're around attractive women, you will have an elevation of testosterone. But anyway, there you have it. So, <laughs> so we're going to be dealing with the 11 ways to boost testosterone and sex drive naturally. So gentlemen, number one, we have to kick the chemicals. Okay, kick the chemicals. Here it is straight, guys, that chemicals will harm your testicles. Simple as that, okay? That's it straight. Things like parabens and phthalates uh, in personal care products and shaving creams and the plastics, uh, plastic bottles, for example, these are all anti-androgens. They're, they're estrogenic. They, they're, they mess up your hormones. And so they're actually, they're actually interrupting the production of multiple hormones that just include testosterone. So the sad news is that many actual personal care products, even men's products, so shaving creams, hair products, even promoted by the gentleman brands and the you know supposedly strong testosterone rich brands are full of xenoestrogens that are endocrine disrupting that could make you, you know, lower your sperm count, make you soft, give you all sorts of challenges in the bedroom. Uh, that's without messing up your actual all round well being. So that's the sad news that many of these um, things are actually feminizing you. And you don't believe me, the actual uh, SBS did a documentary 10 years ago talking about men in danger. The title, the, the documentary was entitled Men in Danger, looking at the fact that, you know, men, that men are being feminized and uh, almost castrated by these chemicals. So it, it, it really gets to me that, you know, do I have your attention yet, fellas? Do I have your attention yet? Um, you know, it gets to me that many blokes think that this is just a women's problem. Oh, I don't use many personal care products and everything. I'm not like my lady and whatever. But in actual fact, everything that you're exposed to in the home is feminizing you. And so whether it be the air freshener, whether it be the the um, you know chemicals in food, whether it be personal care products, perfumes, everything used in the home is feminizing you. We could, if I was to go really strong, it's not entirely uh, the the truth, but I could almost say that it's chemically castrating you. In terms of it's it's not quite that bad. I'm being a little bit aggressive there, but it it's really does such has such a damaging effect to the male reproductive system that we could almost say that. And that's why, you know, the, the documentaries and everything look at wildlife and they've found that in some species the, the reproduction has stopped because the male has no longer been able to uh, father children. So we don't want that to be you. We want you to be able to upregulate your testosterone production. So the endocrine disrupting chemicals pose a definite threat to men's health. They interfere with testosterone production, help you to take on many feminine characteristics such as, uh, you know, the term is gynomastia, uh, essentially developing man boobs. Um, and, you know, these are all man-made chemicals that, that may even still be prevalent and yet have already been banned, but they're making their way around the environment and into your food sources and, and things like that. So first of all, we need to clean up and green up, really kick out the chemicals, clean up your home, Talk to us about our recommendations in this area. So, you know, these are all things like parabens and um, phthalates and bisphenol, um, BPA, for example, triclosan, uh, PCBs, and all, all these sorts of things, uh, polyvinyl chlorides, all of these things that are in personal care products, home care products, air fresheners. Guys, they're messing you up. So it's time to clean up and green up. So really, as I said before, really, really important for erectile dysfunction, for declining sperm count, prostate problems and cancer. The World Health Organization has directly linked these endocrine disrupting chemicals to these sorts of issues. So it's time to kick the chemicals out. Number two in the 11 ways to boost testosterone and sex drive and naturally is to stop zapping your crown jewels, gentlemen. Stop zapping your crown jewels. A lot of guys will put their 
smartphone in their front pocket, otherwise the back pocket. Uh, directly trans putting a, a transmitting device, a, radio, a radiation transmitting device right next to um, their crown jewels. So stop zapping your crown jewels. The effect of mobile phone radiation on male fertility is the subject of recent interest in a lot of investigations, uh, you know, science-wise. But while research has been mostly on sperm quality and motility, you know, it, it's it, it not, and not the health of the testicles as such and testosterone levels, there's a, you know, pretty high degree of evidence that it's a good idea to keep your phone out of your pocket. Better for the health of your crown jewels so it's pretty simple precaution is to to keep it out of your pocket and this is this this is explained by uh, dr deborah lee davis and she's the author of disconnect founding director and uh, of the board of environmental studies and toxicology in the u.s and she believes that smartphones pose a serious health risk and um, you know, most of the time people just think, "Oh, yeah, what a load of you know brain tumors and all this sort of thing." Uh, but understand that sperm sperm can be damaged very easily. Your testicles uh, are endocrine glands, and they can be damaged very easily. And it's not just about you fathering children; it's about the you know them being able to help in the manufacture of hormones. And, uh, and, you know, really to run your body. So very important glands, and it's a good idea to keep that phone out of the pocket. So worst place, um, Dr. Davis said the worst place to keep your phone is in your pants or in your shirt front pocket, where a lot of guys will keep it. Either right up here next to their heart or right in their pocket next to their crown jewels. Not a good idea. Also, the same thing with the laptop computer. So give up this concept. It's a it's a notebook or it's a portable computer. But laptop, you know, unless you like the idea of scrotal hypothermia, so <laughs> which is a real thing, and that's the warming up of the testicular region by using devices on the lap. And uh, and so this has been directly been able to be linked to lowered sperm count and testicular health. Okay, so uh, keep, and, and essentially a bit of a biology lesson in essence that your testicles are outside your body, um, dangling where they can get easily damaged and everything for a really important reason to keep them cooler. Okay, and, and so that is for, for better sperm production and, you know, and, and hormonal health as well. But, um, but in essence, warming them up with any device or whatever uh, not a good idea. So getting the picture yet, fellas, getting the picture. All right, so that's number two. Stop zapping your crown jewels. Number three is to remineralize your body. Trace minerals are essential for the proper function of your entire endocrine system. And of course, your crown jewels, no different. So the truth is many men experience hormonal dysfunction essentially due to a deficiency of minerals in their diet, or they're relying upon a typical diet um, you know, maybe even a junk food diet or even just a not so clean diet um, without bothering to, to supplement. And yet due to modern farming techniques, even if you're doing all the right things, the soil depletion means that you just don't have all of the trace minerals. So zinc and selenium are important minerals when it comes to men's libido and testosterone levels. And that's one of the reasons why as pictured here, oysters get such a good rap for libido. It's due to their zinc levels in particular. But easy does it, guys, because too much zinc can then lead to a decrease in copper and manganese and, um, and then overly inhibit the enzyme involved in testosterone conversion. So what we're seeking is a natural balance. Certainly things like copper, um, as uh, magnesium, very important, magnesium frees up bound testosterone and makes it more bioactive. In fact, in a study that had 400 participants, the researchers found that in older men, higher amounts of magnesium levels directly correlated with higher testosterone levels. So we've got to get the magnesium into you. And one of the other uh, benefits of magnesium is reducing your stress levels as well. So calcium also important, boron so important, 
Um, and again, uh, after two months of giving 13, sub 13 male subjects a boost of boron daily, their, their testosterone increased by 29.5% on average. Pretty powerful stuff. Just This is just using individual minerals. But here's the problem. So, of course, it's not wise to go off and try to get a zinc thing and then try to get selenium and try to get copper or try to get boron. What you need is a trace mineral, a naturally occurring trace mineral supplement. And so we use and recommend in the SEVI team uh, a plant-based trace mineral drink, uh, mostly uh, in this region sourced from the Nadarding Moor, but also from other natural sources around the world in other parts of the world as well. So, so wherever you're coming in from, reach out to us. We can point you in the right direction. If you're lucky enough to already be um, chatting with a Savvy Team wellness guide, then they'll be your best um, your best bet. But otherwise, you can always message us and uh, or, or leave a comment in the comments and we'll do what we can to hook you up and help you out. Brings us to number four. And number four is to take your vitamins seriously, fellas. So vitamins A, E and D, along with some of those minerals that I have already mentioned, are like fertilizers for your androgen production and your testicular function. And so, I, you know, I personally believe that supplements are a targeted way to, um, you know, to support your body's systems. And so, of course, eating better foods, a wide array of vegetables, shellfish, oysters for zinc, you know, Brazil nuts for selenium, carrots for and, and kale for vitamin A, all a good idea, um, you know, seeds and nuts for vitamin E, for example. It's just realistically taking a high potency, proper um, multivitamin supplement with some antioxidants and other herbal extracts in there just makes perfect sense. It's just such a low, uh, a low cost benefit um, in terms of that. But, you know, hey, if you have not seen our Eat Savvy Diet, it's a free download, which is all about you know, educating you to eat savvier foods, foods that are lower in toxicity, higher in nutrition. And so some of the things that you might find appearing on that, for example, um, you know, egg yolk. Egg yolk rich in B vitamins, selenium, has other amounts of all the micronutrients. So that could be really uh, beneficial, getting more eggs. Wild, you know, wild fish. Also, again, iodine, vitamin D, choline, uh, magnesium, B6 and B12, uh, grass-fed beef, high amounts of B vitamins, zinc, magnesium, uh, you know, maybe different natural milk products, especially if you're looking at things like um, buffalo milk, uh, buff buffalo dairy, very good if you can get a hold of the proper uh, buffalo mozzarella and things like, things like that. But, uh, buffalo milk, definitely you want to avoid most high production cow's milk uh, for proper, for proper, um, hormonal function for you guys. But citrus fruits, oysters, raisins, dark leafy greens, all of those things. But I mean, seriously, it's just so easy to take a multivitamin and antioxidant complex along with some essential fatty acids. So that's what I believe you do to get all of your vitamin E, vitamin E, vitamin D, and all of your B vitamins. So that was number four. Then we have number five, and that is get more fat in your diet. Cholesterol is the building block of all your steroid hormones. Cholesterol becomes DHEA, which in turn becomes testosterone. So it's so important. And, you know, this, this whole issue of focusing on low fat has probably messed up a lot of things. And one of the things is men's hormones, or probably women's hormones too, really. The actual amount of dietary fat you eat is so important. And it should be pretty high and in the right ratios of the right types of fats for you to optimize your testosterone. So not all fats are created equal. The polyunsaturated fats tend to decrease testosterone. Okay, so these are your seed oils, your canola oil, your um, safflower oil, your vegetable oils, your soybean oil, all these sorts of things. So polyunsaturated fats tend to decrease testosterone, while saturated fats tend to increase it. So butter and beef fat and um, ghee, well, preferably butter from grass-fed, beef fat from grass-fed, 
cows because again this changes the fat profile and also means there's less likelihood of harmful uh, chemicals uh, as well. So in a particular study researchers tested several nutritional factors to see how well they correlated with um, testosterone levels in healthy men and that they saw that a diet high in saturated fat and a diet, a diet high in monounsaturated fat, so both saturated and monounsaturated fat, these people had increased testosterone levels, whereas the diet high in the polyunsaturated fats, which are almost promoted as being the most heart healthy, they suffered reduced testosterone levels. So the researchers also saw that the higher the dietary fat intake, the higher the testosterone in the diet. Um, uh, yeah, the higher the testosterone level. So not only the, the higher the testosterone in the diet containing mixed fats um, as well. So again, mixing your fats up. So hot olive oil, for example, grass-fed um, grass fats, um, mixing up the fats help to elevate levels as well. So another thing that... Um, that showed up too is that the polyunsaturated oils tend to be inflammatory in the body and this can mess up your hormones as well so so but then getting the oily fish getting krill oils and fish oils into these lower inflammation so really good to include all these different sorts of of oils into into your regime to boost and build testosterone so again, eggs, grass-fed meat, avocado, um, olives, um, olive oil, uh, those sorts of things, coconut oil, wild-caught fish, uh, real butter and ghee from grass-fed cows, all of these sorts of things, and limiting the, the polyunsaturated fatty acids are uh, a wise move too. So number six is to, fellas, lose the gut. So body fat has an adverse effect on testosterone levels. The more belly fat leads to high levels of estrogen, in essence, in the system. Too much estrogen is more is an antagonist to testosterone. So getting leaner, getting rid of the visceral fat and the belly fat, everything around the midsection, has a positive compounding effect on your body. So you get lean, you lower your estrogen, then you have more testosterone, you're able to build muscle more easily. More muscle means a high metabolism and you're able to keep lean and um, fit and have higher testosterone uh, levels and all that sort of thing. So one study actually showed that obese teen boys have up to 50% less testosterone. And these are in the teenage years when testosterone is starting to really um, skyrocket. So half the testosterone uh, when they were obese compared to their non-obese peers. So pretty staggering there. So the next thing is, of course, take it easy on the booze. Apart from slowing down fat loss by up to 73%, alcohol reduces testosterone production and increases estrogen levels. And in particular, that is beer. You know, having, having something every now and then, enjoying a beer on a, on a hot day, enjoying a beer on the weekend with, uh, with your mates and everything, of course, you know, go for it. But uh, it's, it, beer is not that savvy. Uh, certainly uh, things like red wine, much more savvy, or even pure spirits, uh, for, you know, like gin and vodka, uh, for example, cleaner uh, than beer. Beer is one of the worst things. It's one of the most not savvy when you look at how we eat savvy diets. So, you know, again, if you're going to partake of that, just, just moderation because it'll mess up, mess up a lot of things in your system, be inflammatory for your body, as well as messing up your hormone levels. So we're looking to help you boost your testosterone here. So lose the gut and take it easy on the booze, okay? Get some sleep and learn to relax. So studies have shown that people who sleep four or less hours per night have 60% less testosterone, 50%, uh, 55% less bioavailable testosterone than those who slept eight hours. That's a pretty big drop. It's a pretty big drop when you really think about it. 60% less and 55% less bioavailable just by sleeping less. So, uh, you know, it, no doubt it's more of a sliding scale. They just looked at four hours versus eight, but obviously five or six hours would decrease your testosterone levels too. So 
get some more sleep, and obviously your testosterone, testosterone gains will improve. So one study showed that after only one week of five hours a night, testosterone levels dropped 10 to 15 percent. So, you know, while surviving on less sleep may like be macho and the thing to do, and it's actually eroding your hormonal balance. So uh, get some sleep. Next is chill, learning to chill or relax and everything. So, so you know, following on from that issue of nighttime sleep, it's, it sort of like brings up this issue of what we call cortisol levels, the one of the stress hormones in the body. The, it's sort of like the catabolic breakdown hormone. If we think about testosterone is the anabolic build up, improve your body, build up your muscle tissue and everything. Um, cortisol is really the, the breakdown uh, hormone. So certainly cortisol is released in, in higher levels during the stressful fight or flight response. So you want to keep that in check, keep your stress responses in check. If you do live a stressful lifestyle, then looking at some of the things like the four stress busting nutrients that we write about on our Healthy Wealthy Wines blog could help you out there. And so when you look for stress reduction techniques, you can expect um, improved testosterone levels because lowering cortisol means that you're more likely to increase testosterone, okay? So stress is pretty much a major driver of low testosterone. So, you know, all of the things that can you can do to help yourself out, you know, um, relax, you know, <laughs> lay on the lounge, um, go for a walk. Uh, if you're into meditation, then of course, that definitely has a dramatic effect on the hormonal system. Um, so uh, lots, lots of ideas there. Get some sleep and learn to chill. And yes, yeah, so I just leave you with that thought that when, test, when stress goes up, testosterone tends to go down. The next one, number eight, is to create a sunny disposition. The, um, the sunshine vitamin here is what we're talking about. Vitamin D has been linked to better moods, better immune function, better bones, improved testosterone production. So the male reproductive system is a target, in essence, for vitamin D. Vitamin D is not really a vitamin as much as it's a hormone in the body. So vitamin D supplementation has been shown to increase total testosterone levels, bioavailable testosterone, and free testosterone. So very good to get some sun, or otherwise, if you're in a region where you don't get enough, it is a matter of supplementing. So be sure to get your 15 minutes of direct sunshine per day. Uh, you know, get get your shirt off, get some sun, um, especially you know, especially if you're able to uh, in the middle of the day. So contrary to what you've probably been told, actually in the middle of the day when the sun is at solar noon is the best to optimize your vitamin D production and actually get a safe amount of uh, sun. So we want the types of rays that are available then. So certainly as a total aside, looking at the sun first thing in the morning as it's coming up, very good because of the spectrum of light there for optimizing your mitochondrial function which will have a flow on effect into your hormones too. But we're talking here about getting some sun um, on your skin to optimize vitamin D, okay? Which then optimizes testosterone. So number nine is get some herbal help, okay? So there's a, a number of herbs that are, you know, purported to raise testosterone levels. But the challenge is that when you're taking a lot of these weird and wonderful herbs, do you know the source of them? Do you know that they're not contaminated with heavy metals that could be leading to all sorts of other issues down the road? Do you know what the what they're really doing? Have they been well studied and tested? You know, it's so much better to err on the side of general nutrition and adaptogenic herbs. So not generally stimulatory herbs, but adaptic adaptogenic herbs. So so one of the adaptogenic herbs that we really love in the Savvy team is ashwagandha or Withania somnifera. And it's, a, it's widely used in Ayurvedic medicine. Um, and the thing is, it's an adaptogen. So it's not directly stimulatory. It can adapt in the body in essence. So if the body needs calming down, it can work to calm things down. If it needs sort of upregulating, it can do that. It's one of those amazing 
types of herbs, adaptogenic herbs. So um, some studies show that it increases testosterone and some people say that it just modulates stress. But, but nevertheless, when people take ashwagandha, their testosterone goes up. So scientists aren't in, entirely sure whether there's a direct Im, impact or whether it is such a powerful stress modulator that testosterone goes up nonetheless. But hey, we're talking about boosting testosterone here. So, so um, in, in essence, ashwagandha shuts down the stress hormones. So it really does provide a benefit there as well as a significant testosterone boost. Yes, yeah, so that's uh, often available in Chinese herbal formulas and those sorts of things, anti-aging formulas, well-being related formulas. And we certainly use it in a blend that has astragalus or astragalus in it as well, which has been shown to help with the with anti-aging because it, it helps to stop the shortening of the telomeres, which are parts of the DNA that, uh, you know, again, Nobel Prize, uh, a Nobel Prize was won around the discovery of telomeres and uh, telomerase, the enzyme that can, that can sort of halt the breakdown of the telomeres, these parts of the DNA. And so uh, things like astragalus have been shown to be able to slow down that telomere shortening. So good anti-aging uh, there. So grapeseed extract and pine bark, brilliant as well, because these contain molecules that can effectively block the conversion of testosterone to estrogen in the body. And so thereby inhibiting um, that issue and, and enhancing your circulation and, and that sort of thing as well. Ashwagandha, grapeseed, pine bark, and even things like the essential fatty acids, the EPA and DHA, okay? Eicosapentaenoic acid and docosahexaenoic acid. These are some of the main um, oils that uh, are purported to be the best in fish oils, for example, are very rich in krill oil. Um, and that's one of the rec one of our daily recommendations as part of our 90 nutrient program uh, to take these oils by way of krill oil. Next, number 10 in the 11 ways to boost testosterone and sex drive naturally is, I don't know how we're going to go with this, but lift, don't jog. I don't know what it is, but it's like become fashionable for older guys to start marathon running and start jogging and doing these long distance stuff. It's, it's almost reached like a fad-like status. And here's the problem, gentlemen, gentlemen. The problem here is that long distance endurance training, what some people refer to as chronic cardio, produces just a ton of cortisol in the body that's likely to stimulate fat storage rather than getting rid of it. It's going to antagonize testosterone and make testosterone plummet. It plummets growth hormone levels, so you end up with you know flabby muscles rather than strong muscles. Um, you know, cortisol is like muscle death. It's the catabolic hormone, whereas testosterone is the anabolic hormone. So shorter, more intense bursts of exercise, sprinting. You, you just Google it. Just have a look at the, the body of a sprinter versus the body of a marathon runner. And you determine what you want. Do you want the weedy, um, low testosterone body <laughs> of a marathon runner, or do you want the strong, virulent, healthy um, in a in a bodybuilder or a sprinter? It just is the way it is. Jogging does not optimize your hormone function. If you absolutely love it, then you know you can do things to downregulate the damage that you're doing there. But don't take it up thinking it's going to be healthy and anti aging for you. It's the opposite. Sprint, high intensity interval training. Um, weightlifting, especially like here. So joint, um, um, compound movements, multi-joint movements, pressing above the head, like in this one, the military press. Um, because, uh, fellas, you, you know, you have a lot of um, androgen receptors in the upper part of the body. So a lot of the times, even in, in weightlifting, they say, oh, what you need for testosterone, growth hormone, is lots of heavy squats and deadlifts and all those sorts of things. Deadlifts may be, but or don't neglect pressing movements and all that sort of thing because uh, and shoulder stuff, you actually have a high degree of androgen receptors in the upper body. 
And, you know, that there's a reason for that. That means that our physique is meant to be upper body dominant and tapered down. And so work with your hormones by optimizing some of those. Um, so there's like pull-ups, press-ups, um, you know, body weight movements as well, all that sort of thing. Certainly, of course, I'm not saying don't squat or don't deadlift, do those sorts of things. If you're just getting going, body weight things, push-ups, squats, finding a bar at the you know the park and doing pull-ups, uh, all of that's uh, really really great. Pressing above the head, nothing wrong with body weight movements. And you know if you're if you're not really strong and you're getting going, there's also nothing wrong with with um, machine weights either. But lift, don't jog, and and follow our advice. We have some other some other information related to high intensity interval training and sprint protocol. Um, certainly there's a lot of different information there as to how to stimulate your hormones effectively with sprinting. Okay. So talk to us about that if you're interested um, in that. So um, yeah. So again, there's the notes there for you. Avoid jogging, do high intensity interval training and sprints instead. But weightlifting, especially compound movements and upper body work, are uh, really important. So number 11 is experiment with fasting. Now, I first came across the concept of fasting when I was doing research for an earlier book that, um, that we did called um, Secrets for Anti-Aging and Life Extension. And it was around the principle originally studied in, in rats and everything called autophagy. So in other words, that's the, 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 the cleaning up, in essence, the, the body's natural detoxification and cleanup where it's recycling proteins, improving detox and all that sort of thing. So it turns out that fasting for periods of time and even doing that each day in terms of intermittent fasting upregulates autophagy. So it's cleaning up all the damage in your body, helping to slow aging, but it also can help with your growth hormone, human growth hormone stimulation and testosterone production, and also burning fat, and far better than just eating less. So, gents, it means that you can, you know, if you skip meals, you can enjoy a bigger meal, more fat, high, you know, higher amounts of nutrition, and feel satisfied, and actually be doing your body better, doing better from a weight loss point of view, doing better from a hormonal point of view, doing better from a longevity point of view. So. Fascinating stuff. Certainly, there's a lot of misinformation out there on uh, intermittent fasting, but plenty of information out there. We haven't got a lot of information written on it, so you can certainly look that up or otherwise reach out to us. We can point you in the right direction for the places to trust. So fasting longer is not better. This is an example of you know regular periods, like intermittent skipping a meal or having a regular fasting window each day where you don't consume any calories and that sort of thing. So really, really powerful. The next is to focus on the Eat Savvy Diet. This is a free download, which is, um, this is all about educating your food choices. As you, as you can see in this, in this some um, sliding scale or continuum here, there are foods that are not savvy. And in this instance, they're not testosterone savvy. And there are foods that are testosterone savvy. So we want you to be testosterone savvy. So if you've transferred away from dairy, for example, and you are having things like packaged milks, like soy, not so much almond milk, but certainly soy milk, it is a big anti-testosterone. It's a testosterone killer. It stimulates estrogen receptors, not savvy. Junk food, bad fats, chemicals, they're not savvy. But also there are other phytoestrogens that are not going to be testosterone savvy for you either. So the isoflavones. So if your partner's shopping for seeded breads and things that are high in the soy isoflavones, because she, for example, has heard that it's good for her, her hormones, you want to avoid that stuff. In fact, probably giving up grains altogether <laughs> would be really wise for you as a male. Um, a lot of the legumes, not so good for your testosterone. Um, a lot of the things, some mushrooms, not so good because of the, um, you know, the, the types of fungus or toxins involved there can mess up your hormones as well. So for example, you know, I'd heard um, people talking about the, um, 
uh, the meat substitute corn, Q-U-O-R-N, being great, a great protein substitute. The challenge is that it's a, estri- it's a, it's a testosterone antagonist. So while it's a meat substitute and a vegetable-based protein coming from um, a, a particular type of mushroom, it's also a, not so good for your testosterone levels. And we're talking about being testosterone savvy, increasing sex drive naturally, improving sperm count, um, sperm motility, uh, and all of the things and signs of testosterone in you that relate to you being more virile, manly, and um, strong. So, um, yeah, so, and then all the other things like wheat and the molds that are found in a lot of grains, not so good. Um, even, for example, molds and things from your grain fed food, so grain fed beef and everything, can be full of toxins that are antagonists for testosterone. So, you gotta be careful of all those, all those things. Um, so, following the Eat Savvy diet will set you up in the right right direction so there you have it that's been the 11 ways that you can boost testosterone and sex drive naturally so a little bit of a bonus tip here you may have um you know if maybe you're a lady here watching this and going oh the last thing i'm going to do is share this with my partner because what's this a boost sex drive i don't want to do that or maybe you do (laughs) and you need him to perform better um, <laughs> but fellas, sex drive and everything. So here's a little bit. Of, if it's, if I'm talking to you, gents, and you you need you need to um, create some encouragement for your uh, in your partner. Research is showing that three orgasms a week for women has a distinct anti-aging effect on the skin. It's one of the things that upregulates the the circulation to the skin uh, helps. Uh, it, it has been shown to noticeably make women look 10 years younger. So gents, you have a task, okay? <laughs> um, your your challenge, should you choose to accept it, is to let your partner know that information that you can look 10 years younger with three orgasms a week, okay? And so, you know, there you go. There you have it. Um, there's actually been studies with older um, in, with older men and women too that <laughs> sorry gents but sec, regular sexual activity actually increases your risk of um, cardiovascular incidence as you can imagine um, when you're older if you haven't looked after yourself whereas it's actually very beneficial for women okay so very anti-aging and beneficial for women but the kicker is, um, you know, you've got to make it satisfying for you both. So there you have it. Good for testosterone, good for anti-aging. You could look 10 years younger. All you need is three orgasms a week. There's your challenge. So you can visit our Healthy Wealthy Wise um, blog. Um, we've got lots of lots of information available there um, on the blog. And uh, look, look, hey, you can achieve hormonal balance, optimal health, boost your testosterone, testosterone, we can help you get there. Okay, so it really is just a matter of of this quote. We love this quote that today I choose to be healthy. It's really your health and lifestyle choices every day. They lead you either in the direction of optimal well-being or towards sickness. And so let us know how can we help. Let us know through the comments. Um, you know, let us know. We actually have a form that you can fill out old school where you fill it out and scan it and get it back to us. Uh, really a bit of a survey of, of the things that you're grappling with. And, and we want to help you, you know, reach that higher level of well-being. But look, next step, request an invitation into our private Facebook group. And then we can point you towards more specific information that can really help you out. So this is free. We also have a free website um, private website with courses and action plans for our members and uh, and so but first step is to um, if you're not already part of the healthy wealthy wise group is request an invitation and we can get you you know really progressing towards that high level of well-being and if you have any questions about any of the material that I've chatted about here or take or you want to take action 
on the hints and tips, then that's what we are here for. Okay, so reach out to us. You can you can you know leave it leave a comment there, message us or whatever. You can swing by the Healthy Wealthy Wise blog. But if you do have a contact who is a wellness guide or a contact of the savvy team, then speak to them. It may be the fastest way for you to get into the uh, to into that private Facebook group. So. So again, thanks for being with us for the 11 ways to boost testosterone and sex drive naturally. I hope um, hope I've given you some food for thought to, you know, to um, to help move you in the right direction or and get things, shall we say, pointing in the right direction. You know, get rid of eliminate erectile dysfunction, stimulate, um, you know, stimulate testosterone production. When you get that right, everything improves. Guys, you're going to feel better. You're going to, um, you know, you're going to work's going to be easier. You're, you're, you're going to, you're not get your hormones, your, your hormones, your immune system are going to be better. You're going to be reducing inflammation. You know, testosterone is not just about sex drive. It's about all round health, vitality, virility, wellness, uh, a proper, bo- a good, healthy body composition, and a longer life. So. It's Corey here from the Savvy Team, encouraging you to be savvy. We'll catch you again sometime in the future. Leave us the comment. You know, if you found this information beneficial, then let us know in the comments, and also please like and share this information. So, be testosterone savvy. All the best, and we'll catch you again soon.